I'll tell you what, man, you freaking, I'm in the best shape ever, but you run up a flight of stairs and gets you every time. <laughs> oh, man. That's amazing. <laughs> Cardio is not going to be good on Saturday. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Better get them out quick, right? <laughs> well, talk to you, Dan. I mean, uh, another main event for you, but this one in Vegas, you know, is it, is it a little bit different feel being, you know, kind of a home game for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it's nice. It's nice to be at home, drive down the street, get a quick dub. Um, it's definitely nice not having to wake up at four in the morning and fighting. <laughs> so um, here we are, man. It's just another fight to me. Two more rounds. Uh, you know, I, I don't. I love the the little added extra pressure of the main event. It doesn't doesn't really change the fight too much because it's still me and they're against another guy. But here we are, a couple of days away, and I, I'm I'm just pumped and ready to go. Do people still hit you up for tickets and stuff in the COVID era? Does that still happen, or do they know that there's no fans in there? Kinda. I mean, like. More so my family, like mom, wife, everyone wants to come. They might actually come, but we'll see how it happens, you know, with the, with the newborn and all. Um, I requested it, so we'll see what happens, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I was going to ask you, first camp done, you know, with, as a dad. Um, I mean, obviously, like, scheduling's tough. I mean, how has it all played out for you? Have, you? have you found motivation, or is that just a cliche? Has it been difficult with the, the layout? What, what's it been like? Um, camp's been great, and I, I do know one thing. Dad's strength is a real thing. Uh, I definitely have that dad strength right now. Um, but if anything, my son just brought me so much more structure in my life. He, he's brought me structure in my training, structure in my life. Um, so far, it's been so it's been great. This has honestly been the best camp I've ever had. Um, I always say that, but it really has because I try to look and improve every camp. And this has been the absolute best camp as far as structure and just getting the most out of every training session, and I feel like I'm my optimal self right now. Very nice. You fought on a zombie card back in, I think, 2019, like South Carolina, I believe. Did you, do you remember being then? I mean, you were still kind of on your way up. Did you, like, look at him and go, like, oh, that's a guy I'm going to be fighting someday? Yep, June 22nd, 2019, I fought Kevin Aguilar, and the Korean zombie fought Hanato Moikano, got a nice KO. Um, I do. You know, I, I was look, I've, I've watched every single one of the zombies' fights. I, I've, I'm a fan. I'm not going to lie. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of his, and that's one of the reasons why I called for this fight because it's just an entertaining fight for not only myself but for everyone. And, um, you know, it, it, it's one of those fights where, you know, that your idols become your rivals um, type of moment. And I, I can't wait to stand across the cage from him, and we're going we're gonna to put on a great show for everyone. Is that a weird feeling? I mean, like you said, it's kind of like that, that old saying, you know, your idols become your rivals. Is it weird when you get to that point to, like, I guess accept it and to be like, yeah, I deserve to be here. Like, they're, they're no different than me. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes you, you, I have to remind myself, like, I'm one of the best fighters in the world, too. And sometimes, like, you forget that because you're looking at, like, you're fighting these guys, like, Korean Zombies, Edson Barbosa's, like, all these Calvin Caters, Gavin Tucker, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But, like, I'm one of these guys too, and I have to constantly remind myself. I don't, I don't put myself on that pedestal, but I also don't put other guys on that pedestal either. Um, that's something I did in the past. Like I'll, I'll hype the guys up more than they actually are. So um, I'm just treating this as another fight. Going to head down the street two blocks and get a dub. Has this been weird for you? I mean, like your biggest fights. Obviously, it seems like it gets bigger every time. But your biggest fights have all taken place without fans. Has that been bittersweet at all? Like, this is the point, in, you know, when you're headlining cars, that's when the arena should be packed and people are going nuts, you know, and you're not kind of getting to experience that. Has that been bittersweet for you at all? Uh, just a little bit. You know, I, I watched UFC 263 um, this past weekend, and, man, seeing that crowd and Brandon Moreno winning a title and Izzy and Marvin going after it and Nate Diaz and Leon and everyone was going crazy. Like, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little jealous, but I, I, I know it'll come. And uh, especially after this fight, we get a win over this, uh, over the Korean Zombie, big things will come. I know uh, places are starting to open, and, and I do see my next fight. Wherever it is, whoever it is, it's going to be in a big arena with a lot of fans. Your last fight, you mentioned the Gavin Tucker fight. I mean, it's pretty flawless, right? I mean, what, what do you take out of a fight like that? Because I don't know if you can ever hope to execute like that again, can you? Or, or do you say, hey, I did it once, I can do it again? Um, I definitely have the ability to do it again. I know that, but the, the the good thing about that fight is I didn't really get to show much. I didn't show my improvements from from my last fight with Calvin Cater. I didn't. I worked so much 
going into the Gavin Tucker fight. Um, I mean, it was supposed to be Ryan Hall, so I worked a ton of grappling, ton of leg locks, um, and then we got Gavin Tucker. It was a different style, and then, I don't know, man, everything just kind of clicked and happened, and um, I'm just a completely better, improved fighter, and um, I'm excited to get to show that. So with that in mind, I mean, I think a, a lot of reason people are so excited about this fight is you guys both can brawl, right? So, I mean, so are, are we expecting a, you know, a brawl, a back and forth kind of war? Or do you feel like, no, that's not the kind of fight I want to be in. I can, I can dominate this fight. Um, all I know is I'm going to go in there. I, he, he's the self-proclaimed best brawl in the world, but I'm going to go in there and hit him and hit him first, and we'll see what happens. I, I, I will engage with him, and he's going to engage with me. There's no surprise there, but, I, you know, we'll see what happens June 19th, Saturday night. Dig it. Last thing for me, uh, you know, obviously you're expecting a big win here over a big name like this. You said, you know, whatever, whoever's next. I know you study the division. I know, I know you know where everybody's at and what's going on. So where do you see this path taking? I mean, what makes sense for you to get to the title? So, yeah, Max Holloway fighting Yair Rodriguez, and you have Brian Ortega challenging Volkanovski for the title, and then you have myself and Korean Zombie. Korean Zombie is number four in the world, so a big win over the Zombie puts me right there in the mix. Um... The good thing is I'm the first one up, so I have to go out there and set the standard. I have to set the bar. Um, I have to show and prove that I am a contender. And I guess you just have to see how every all these other fights play out with Max and, and Yair in July and these other guys in September, I think. And um, I just have to be ready, man. You never know. Like, someone falls out, uh, might get a title shot. You never know. Um, I don't know. I'm just going to be ready. I plan on beating the zombie, and we'll go from there. There's a lot of talk about fighters who have children and then have this crazy performance afterward, and I'm wondering if you're thinking about that at all, if you feel that, and maybe this is a question I ask after the fight, but do you kind of see that and feel that and understand it now that you're a new dad? Um, in a way, uh, I've always been very motivated, and definitely having Bam has brought a lot more motivation in my life. If anything, like, like I said before, he's brought structure in my life. But now I'm not only providing for myself anymore. I know this is a selfish sport, but I'm doing this for my family. I'm doing this for my son. I want my family to have a better life. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely motivated and fired up. And uh, I don't know how much of a difference that will make because, I've, like I said, I've always been very motivated. But I do plan on going out there and um, leaving it all on the line, putting everything on the line and taking risks. And I'm, I'm looking to go out there and come out victorious. Thank you. Yep. Hello, Dan, uh, from Ecuador. Hello. Uh, two things, uh, excited, nervous. Uh, how do you feel this fight? I have all the emotions, you know. You, you, I'm not going to lie, you get nervous, excited, happy, angry. I'm not really angry, but I'm a pretty happy guy. Um, yeah, I'm just full of emotions, and I think that's good. But, you know, when it, when it comes fight night, the emotions die down. I become calm, poised in the moment. Um, I'm completely in the moment right now. Obviously, yes, I want to be at home spending time with my family. But I, in the past, through my past experiences, when I, when I am in that future mindset, I'm not completely in the fight. So uh, I'm just trying 100% to be in the present and I feel like that's where the flow state comes from. So um, I'm just enjoying every second of this. I, I enjoy all the interviews. I enjoy the media, taking photos. I know it's a lot of work, especially being the main event. There's a lot more demands. I was here at 7.45 in the, 7.45 a.m. this morning I was here. Um, they actually said I was early. So uh, yeah, I'm a true professional, I'm here. Uh, talking about the fight, uh, what do you think? Korean uh, Zombie? Uh, yes. <laughs> what do you think, uh, as a UFC fighter, about shows like uh, Mayweather and Logan Paul? Do you like it? Do you think it's just entertainment? Uh, what do uh, you feel? No, I, yeah, for sure. I, I, these guys are doing their thing. It's, it, it is a form of entertainment, and they're making money, and that's good. I think it's good for the sport. Um, would you do it? So would I do it? Yeah. Either? I mean, it... It depends, obviously, but my sport is MMA. I, I love the sport of MMA. This is what I compete in. Of course, I would do some type of exhibition fight if, you know, if 
opportunities came, but I, I'm here. I'm here to be a world champion. That is my main and only focus. Um, after that, yeah, we'll go out there. We'll, we'll try to make some money in somehow, some way, but I'm making money doing this too. So um, I, I, what I don't like is guys that sign contracts, they fight one fight and then they complain about the money they're making. So um, I signed a new deal with the UFC. I'm very happy with the money I'm making. I will fight out my deal, and then I'll make more money. So I, I'm just here. I'm doing my thing. I love what I do. I love my job. Um, you know, fighters complain about pay, but we're always a fighter's always going to want more money. Promoters always going to want you for a little less. But if I'm making a million dollars, I want two million. If I'm making two, I want ten. So I I don't know, man. I, I'm blessed and fortunate, and I'm just lucky to be able to do what I do. Uh, one from the uh what do you think about Chito Vera? We are from Ecuador. Uh, he's our only fighter here in the UFC. Uh, how do you see him? Yeah, uh, Chito is a beast, man. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of his. He's, uh, he's fought top competition. He's definitely, he definitely deserves to be in that, you know, the talks of the top of the division. Um, he's been out there. He's been, been hurting guys, been finishing guys. Uh, I'm a fan, and I'm excited to share a card with him. Thank you. Uh, Dan, um You've, you've had the unique experience of being on the first card back during the pandemic, the first uh, card, you know, in the, on Fight Island. you kind of seen the evolution of during the pandemic. Do you see much of a change from Florida a year ago till, till now? Um, yeah, I mean, I, things have definitely got a lot more structured. Uh, fighting in Florida... That was a cool experience, just fighting in a big arena, but it was empty. It was kind of like an eerie, weird experience, just walking out, and it was cold, and no one's in there, and big atmosphere, but no energy. Uh, it was a good experience, and then going to Fight Island was almost like an alien experience, just like completely different planet. Like, it was weird. I remember just warming up in the back rooms, and there's no ceilings, and you hear everything, and, like, the colors is, like, purple and blue, and... It was like sci-fi. Um, and then obviously the Apex. The Apex has been, uh, you know, that was my first time fighting here. I've trained here a bunch. Um, but it, it, was, it was nice to fight here and to fight at home. And uh, I'm just looking forward to this fight. But I, I do look forward to getting back to fighting with fans. You know, I think we're way past this. Um, this uh, pandemic thing, whatever you want to call it, is I feel like, I feel like it's over. But, you know, we're, we're just taking the extra precautions and we're doing what we have to do. And, yeah, we'll get through this fight and see what happens. Would you rather be the main event on a, a fight here uh, and without the fans or a co-main uh, with the fans? Yeah, I mean, you get more money to be the main event, so I, <laughs> I want more money. <laughs> And, and one last one for me. What, uh, what do you think uh, uh, will affect your, your fight more, the preparation or whatever? Is uh, this going through the, the pandemic or having your first kid, uh, you know, f fighting? You know what? I, I, I don't really let outside circumstances define me or my performance. Um, I, don't, I don't know what type of effect. You know, obviously, when the whole pandemic started, I didn't. It was a weird time, and I, I didn't. I, I just saw it as opportunity. I wasn't. I mean, I was stuck at home, locked down on the couch. They called me to fight Edson Barboza in two weeks because I said I want to fight, and then they said you got Edson Barboza, a guy who's. I fought him in May. He's been training like a killer since since December, and I had two weeks going into that fight. Yeah, it was close. I got the win. Yeah, it was close. A lot of people argued otherwise, but it was still a crazy fight under crazy circumstances. And then I got the opportunity to fight Calvin Cater four weeks later. And um, man, it's, I'm, I'm, man of, I'm a man of opportunity. So uh, these big opportunities come. When I got this fight to fight the Korean Zombie, it was two days before my son was born. Um, I even said I was gonna take time off. I was probably gonna come back around September, October, just enjoy time with my family. But I'm also a man of opportunity and this is this fight here is way too good of an opportunity to pass up because someone else would have took it from me and it would have put me on the sidelines and put me on the back burner. So I'm selfish in that sense where I want to succeed and I want to be a champion so bad that I'll do whatever it takes, whether that's 
uh, missing time away from my son, like every single day, like, I, I don't want to go train because I want to hang out. I want to watch my son grow up. I'm at fight week. I have to spend time away from him. I don't want to do that, but it's the sacrifice it takes to become a champion, so I'll do whatever it takes. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, guys. See ya.